Decades ago when the language was first created, who would have thought JavaScript, something that was meant to be a scripting language for the browser, would become synonymous with web development. With thousands of frameworks in place today to fulfill each and every requirement of ours, we have come a long way. In this video, we go back in time and see how we got to where we are today. The year was 1993 when National Center for Supercomputer Applications, the NCSA, released NCSA Mosaic. The speciality of this browser was that it was the first graphical web browser, which means it displayed graphics such as images, in addition to just the text. In the year 1994, in Mountain View, California, a company was founded by the name Mosaic Communications. They recruited the initial authors who wrote NCSA Mosaic to rewrite the exact same product which they called Mosaic Netscape. Mosaic Netscape turned out to be a huge success. Within the first four months of its release, it became the leading browser in the market at that time, capturing 75% of the market share. To avoid legal issues, the name of the browser was changed to Netscape Navigator and the company was renamed to Netscape Communications. To ride on the wave of this accelerated growth and to engage more and more people with this browser, the founder of the company was looking for a programming language for this browser. He envisioned it to be easy so that everyone could code on it and that web designers could use it to embed snippets of code into the markup for their pages. In the year 1995, Brendan Eich was given the Goliath task to design and develop the said programming language for the web browser and present a prototype. Brendan accepted the challenge and came up with an initial draft in 10 days. It had bare minimum functionality, but the main part was that it was functional. At that time, nobody could have thought that this piece of code, whose initial draft was written in such a haste, would someday go on to conquer the world of web development as we know it. The draft version of JavaScript was called Mocha when it was first released. Later, in the beta version of Netscape Navigator 2.0, its name was changed to LiveScript. And then, in the beta 3 of Netscape Navigator 2.0, it was named as JavaScript. The language was nowhere close to Java in its core design or functionality, but it was intentionally named JavaScript. This is alleged to be a strategic move in order to lure the Java developer community which was flourishing at that time to come develop on the web browser. The move was an attempt to make them feel more at home. Looking at Netscape releasing JavaScript, Microsoft rather than joining them made their own separate plans. They released their own scripting languages for the web browser, VBScript and JScript. Microsoft did not want to lose the browser battle to Netscape so much so that JScript is often called the reverse engineered version of JavaScript that was created for Internet Explorer 3. But each of these implementation of features were inherently different for IE and Netscape, which proved to be a pain point for developers who struggled to support both the browsers with their code. To bring a kind of stability to the situation, Netscape submitted JavaScript to ECMA International in order to define standards to be implemented, which could then be shared with other browser vendors so that they can implement similar functionality in their browsers. The standardization organization released ECMAScript, which was published in the ECMA 262 standard released in June 1997, with JavaScript being the most well-known implementation of that standard. Subsequent versions of the standard were released one after the other. ECMAScript 2 in June 1998, ECMAScript 3 in December 1999. But even though the work for ECMAScript 4 was started in 2000, it never actually got released. This was because Microsoft, a major player in the browser market, had made its intentions clear to not implement proper JavaScript in the Internet Explorer. Nor did they have any competing proposal for the same. This had its impact on the ECMAScript 4 release which got dragged forever. Finally, Microsoft got help from Douglas Crockford with whom they started working on ECMAScript 3.1. While all that chaos was taking place, there were great things that were happening for JavaScript as well. In 2005, Jesse James Garrett came up with something revolutionary. He coined the term Ajax for a set of technologies whose core was based in JavaScript. 
These technologies enabled web pages to perform network related tasks in the background which improved page reloads and made the pages more dynamic. This sort of kickstarted the JavaScript open source movement wherein more and more libraries started getting written in JavaScript and active communities started getting created around them. Some of the most popular ones from those are Prototype, the Dojo framework and the most popular of them all jQuery. Meanwhile, to fix all the chaos that was going on in the JavaScript standards world, all the parties concerned decided to meet in July of 2008 at Oslo. It was decided that ECMAScript 3.1 was to be renamed as ECMAScript 5 and released. Also, an agenda was created to drive all the future engagement of the parties and that agenda was named as Harmony. Thus, ECMAScript 5 was released in the December of 2009 and since then several releases have happened. The most popular of them being ECMAScript 2015, also known popularly as ES6. By the time ECMAScript 5 was released in 2009, JavaScript had become the language of the web. Developers who earlier did not give the language enough respect, who considered it to be a tool for web designers to tweak their websites, now started to take it seriously. This resulted in a huge engagement from the community. Framework started getting developed in JavaScript, which started to get more traction. JavaScript was now not just a browser-specific language, but a server-side language as well. Also, the prevalence of single-page applications meant more and more importance to JavaScript on the page, and this was good news too. As a result of these and many other factors, the popularity and reach of JavaScript grew manifold over the next few years. Today, JavaScript has captured territories that were considered unsuitable for the language to even enter. The rate at which new frameworks are coming up is unheard of before for any other programming language. JavaScript rules over the browser, the front-end development, back-end development, server-side, even IoT devices like Alexa and Google Home publish their development environment in JavaScript before any other language. The language surely has come a long way. But now, what next? Where are we headed? What is the future for a language which is so hot right now that every other day we hear of a new framework overthrowing an old one for performance, ease of implementation, etc. The boon of JavaScript, that is the accelerated development, is turning out to be one of its pain points. What do you think is coming next? Let us know in the comment section what you think about the future of JavaScript is and where it is headed. Also, if you are a big time fan of the language just like us, then hit that subscribe button and join us. Check out our other awesome videos too, we believe you'll like them. See you next time, until then, goodbye, happy learning.